Hey guys, my name is Luke O'Connell and today we're going to be taking a look at a very strange time and place in evolutionary history. A time when one continent was so cut off from the rest of the planet that it allowed a whole myriad of unique species to evolve. A continent which to this day is still revered as one of the wildest places on earth. Today we are going to be taking a look at the age of the megafauna in Australia. Australia used to be part of the supercontinent known as Gondwana. But 180 million years ago, Australia broke away from this super landmass and cut off from the rest of the world in this isolated landmass. The animals here evolved unlike anywhere else on the planet. While there are plenty of examples of strange Australian wildlife throughout the geological history of the continent, one period of time which is particularly interesting for its immense biodiversity is the Cenozoic. During this age of mammals, Australia became host to numerous ecosystems containing completely unique animals, and they diversified into some truly spectacular forms. One animal which particularly thrived during this age of megafauna was known as Diprotodon, and although this animal somewhat resembles a giant hairy rhino without a horn, they were in fact marsupials, relatives of modern day koalas and kangaroos. And these animals were hugely successful, with fossils of them being discovered all over the continent. And this is also the only marsupial, living or dead, which has shown evidence that they in fact had seasonal migrations across this massive continent. And these weren't the only enormous marsupials to inhabit this region. Procoptodon was an absolutely gargantuan kangaroo, the largest species of kangaroo ever to have lived. Like Diprotodon, it would have fed on the shrubbery and low trees of the Australian wilderness. They had relatively short faces and also they may not have moved in the same fashion as modern kangaroos. Kangaroos are famous for hopping across the arid plains of Australia, but many believe that Procoptodon would have been too big to achieve this kind of locomotion. So many believe that these immense kangaroos moved in a fashion that is somewhat similar to hominids, human beings, in that they walked upright. However, while they could not hop on these legs, the legs still had immensely powerful muscles and these animals probably would have been quite capable of using these powerful legs as an effective form of self-defense. And indeed, there was quite a large variety of predators that lived in the same time and place as these marsupial animals. Some marsupials evolved for a more carnivorous lifestyle. One example of this is the thylacoleo or the marsupial lion. While superficially resembling a modern day big cat, marsupial lions were no relatives of felines. In fact, there isn't much around today that really resembles animals like marsupial lions. But this repertoire of carnivorous animals wasn't just limited to mammalian predators. There was a distinct variety of large reptilian carnivores living at that time. With the most famous example being none other than the great ripper lizard itself, Varanus priscus aka Megalania. It was quite closely related to modern day monitor lizard species. It had a mouth filled with strong, serrated teeth. These would have been ideal for slicing into prey. However, what is potentially Megalania's most lethal biological adaption could be something much more subtle. It has been discovered relatively recently that modern day monitor lizards, such as the lace monitors and the Komodo dragons, possess venom. Megalania could have also had this toxic adaption. It probably would have been an ambush hunter, waiting for its prey to wander close enough to it so that it could suddenly launch itself from its hiding place in a sudden burst of speed, running down its prey and delivering a lethal bite. There was also a species of terrestrial crocodile. This means a crocodile that lives mainly on land. This animal was known as Quincana. Quincana is believed to have grown up to about 6 meters in length. But one very interesting feature about Quincana is that unlike modern crocodiles who have their legs splayed out to the side, Quincana's legs were set underneath the animal. This would have allowed Quincana to run much more efficiently than modern day crocodiles. So what happened to this spectacular megafauna on this wild continent? Well, while there are a number of reasons such as changing climates and environments, one contributing factor to the extinction of a large amount of the megafauna in Australia is believed to have been the arrival of Earth's new top predator, human beings. Australia truly was host to a menagerie of truly unique animals and still is today. 
from huge prehistoric flightless birds to the gigantic marsupial herbivores. There was even a small species of extinct basal turtle known as Meolania, and it shared an almost uncanny resemblance to a family of dinosaurs which went extinct at the end of the Cretaceous period. And although it was in no way at all related to any species of dinosaur, it did share some definite similarities with these animals. Animals that were some of the most impressively armoured creatures evolution has ever produced. But that is the topic for next week's video. Thank you very much for watching and please do feel free to let me know in the comments if there's any topics or animals you would like me to cover in the future. But for now, thank you very much for watching.